Hey everyone. Yesterday I recorded a blues video and I had some nice comments, uh, which was really kind, thank you. Um, but I also had some people asking me how I went about doing that, uh, both technically and uh, musically, how do you go about record creating something like that. So I thought this week I'd do more of a how-to. Um, so Anna, take it from both of those points of view. So firstly I'll talk about uh, the tools that I use to create these videos and then secondly I'll talk musically about how I go about structuring a solo like that. So uh, let's hear a bit of it to start with. Okay, so the tools that I use are, um, they're, they're pretty much the stuff that I've got lying around the house for the most part. Uh, the, the one piece of recording equipment I do have is the camera that I use, which is a Canon 700D, and that's what I use to shoot these videos. Um, in terms of the audio though, I just use what I've got. So for example, when I made that clip, uh, I recorded it on my iPad. I used my iPhone to uh, play the back backing track so I had something to play, play against. And I mixed it down on my PC using a free bit of software called Audacity. And then finally I mirrored that with the video using uh, a, a re reasonably cheap editing package called Movie Maker. So just going through the stages of that, um, the, the actual steps involved in, in creating that were, firstly, I'd create a leading track. And what that is, is just 60 seconds of me counting from 1 to 60, just counting the seconds. And then with Audacity, I actually uh, cut that in front of the backing track. And what that does is it gives me a 60 second gap, which, which leads into the actual backing track, which allows me to set things up. So once I've got that, I'll use Dropbox to drop that onto my iPhone. I then set up my equipment, set up the camera, set up the guitar and everything, tune myself in. Once I'm ready to start shooting, I press play on my iPhone. So I've got my headphones in and I'm listening to me counting from 1 to 60. And while that's running, I hit record on the camera and I hit record on the iPad, get myself comfortable and then once the backing track starts to play, I'm away. Once I've got that, uh, that's when I, I basically export the audio that I've just recorded uh, to the PC using Dropbox again. And then once it's in the PC, I've got the original backing track and I use Audacity to mix the guitar and the backing track together, get the levels right. Uh, and that creates me my, my piece of music, my, my output. And then I import that into Movie Maker, and that's how I create the video. Um, simple as that. In terms of the, how I approach the solo, um, it's, uh, it's a long, long piece of music. I, I'll put a link to the place where I got the backing track in the description field, uh, so you can download it yourself. Uh, the backing track was over five minutes long, so when I'm approaching something like that, I actually start to think about the structure uh, and the theme that I want to use within that. So in this, in this track, what I did actually was I listened to the backing track without my guitar. Often, uh, when you're coming up with a theme or an idea, it's, it's a good idea to leave your instrument alone and just whistle or hum and come up with something because that means you, you're concentrating on the music, you're not concentrating on all the same licks and riffs that you always play. Uh, and, and that was kind of how I came up with the theme for this, which was this, uh, let me see if I can remember it. That was the uh, idea that I just came up with away from my guitar. And so you'll hear that as a recurring theme and that kind of allows me to connect different parts of the solo together. Uh, structurally, I did think about the structure, but I didn't actually follow it. Uh, I came in 
uh, I approach the cello from the point of view of, okay, that, so this is actually, if you listen to it, there are five, they go five times around the 12 bar shape. So I basically broke it down into five sections. Uh, my plan was to establish the theme in the first section and then in the second section take that up an octave and maybe build it up a little bit more. Uh, third time round, I actually did come up with another theme which uh, I wanted to sort of build up the intensity with that on that third time round leading into the fourth time which, is where, which was going to be a free-for-all, you know, a full-on improv. And then the fifth time round I was going to bring it back into the theme again and then that would join all the, all the parts together and, and create the piece of music. In reality, um, what uh, the other thing that I do when I'm, when I'm trying to get into a solo like that is I try and get emotionally in contact with the music as soon as possible. I try and lose myself in it. So as soon as I do that, all of this intellectual stuff goes out the window uh, and that's what happened to me in this solo. So probably I, I, I got as far as the second time round and then I was gone. I wasn't really thinking structurally anymore. I was just in, in the moment. So I didn't actually follow the structure I'd planned, but, but that's, that's how it goes. That's why we do these things. That's why it's called improvisation. You just follow what you feel in the moment, which is what I did when I did that recording. So hopefully that's of use to you. Uh, as I say, I'll put a link to the backing track and give it a go yourself. Uh, just use the equipment that you've got lying around. You'd be amazed at what you can achieve uh, without having to spend a lot of money on expensive recording equipment. So uh, have fun with it, give it a go and see how you get on with it. Speak to you next time. Mm -hmm.